What was interesting is as Matthew was was bearing down onto the the uh, space coast, even as as early as four or five days before it actually hit, you know, we were talking about having a hurricane party because it was just another one that was going to be a near miss. Fate uh, directed it towards us. And for the first time in the tw- uh, the 45th Space Wings history, we did a 100% evacuation. Wow. Uh, never been done before. Uh, we hadn't practiced it before, but we did it. And I still have the key that I used to lock the gates uh, as I was the last person off the gate. We had shut down our power grids, our water grids, everything as we prepared. And then we hunkered down at Cape Canaveral in a facility that would withstand a Category 5 hurricane, which we thought Matthew was going to be when it hit. Long and the short of it is, Matthew... Uh, jogged about uh, 15 miles to the east, uh, went through an eye wall replacement when it came by us. So it was really a weak category four that caused about $80 million in damage. Uh, and remember, we had evacuated everybody and and, and sent them to, to safety, and the base had significant damage. My golf course alone, uh, 86 trees were down. And so there was damage all across the installation. I went around the base and filmed. I filmed neighborhoods, I filmed the marina, and let people know that, hey, we're, we've got damage here. Your homes are safe. However, it's going to be a little while before we get back. Well, when we made the decision to come back uh, to reopen the base to our residents, I had a choice that day of taking a, a helicopter uh, tour uh, with my, my good friend, uh, Bob Cabana, the director of Kennedy Space Center, uh, to survey the damage and so that I could get a better understanding of how much damage we had at Cape Canaveral as well, which suffered significant damage. But instead, what I did was, again, that leadership by example, I chose to work the gate, uh, so our security mm-hmm. gate that day, and I personally welcomed every single resident back, uh, thanked them uh, for their patience with us, let them know that if they needed anything, they could call me, they could call the leadership team, but really just put their minds at ease that we were working for them to keep them safe and do everything that we could to get them back to their life the way it was before. Uh, and it was probably the uh, the single most important thing I did during that, uh, that entire three-year uh, experience because a year later we had to do the same thing for Irma. Uh, and the residents were far better prepared and they knew – uh, that we would do everything in our power to to keep them safe uh, and keep their property safe. And during those two evacuations, we did not suffer a single injury uh, or casualty to any of our folks. That's remarkable. The story kind of loops back around to your earlier point around social capital, right? Because in your role, you probably could have convinced yourself, I need to be on that chopper surveying. Everyone would understand that. Uh, they would not expect you being at the gate. And and that's yeah. such a powerful decision. And I think if we connect the dots back to even reentry, I think for all of us as leaders to really think about what are the things you think are important that in fact you can delegate so you can actually focus on the social capital, focus on being there uh, and setting the tone that you did with your people. 